game time for the untouchable true school sports. Let's go, baby. Bow. Be careful what you wish for because because it can become a reality. Yeah. The untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so y'all wanted that boxing talk. Y'all didn't like. Some of y'all didn't like that last video because it was kind of off the wall. It wasn't the norm here on True School Sports. But let, let, let's talk about some of the fights that transpired on that Crawford Majumov card. And we'll start the main event: Terence Crawford moving up in weight trying to become a four division champion against a, a legitimate you know 154 pound champion strong sturdy well-schooled um athletic guy imagimov and uh he wins a decision a close fight a close but clear fight which i thought you know a lot of times in boxing we complain about judges scorecards and how judges scorecards are oftentimes off but i, I thought this is one of the uh, occasions where Judging was pretty good, you know. Um, I believe two judges had it at 113, 113, and one judge had it at 116, 112. I thought those scores were pr pretty re reflective of the fight because I definitely think Majumov was competitive in a lot of rounds. He was able to hit Craw Crawford flush in a lot of rounds. It was clear that his rhythm, the way he fights, the way in which he moves around the ring, disrupted the timing of Crawford, and, and, and Crawford wasn't able to quite dissect him the way he's dissected most of his opponents over these last. Uh, you know, seven years and he's been getting, getting nothing but knockouts. So credit goes to him. I, I, I knew Majumov could fight. I've been watching Majumov for years now. Um, I think even even for someone like me who's been watching him for years, I think Israel Majumov actually exceeded expectations a bit. And a lot of people think he won that fight. I mean, I've seen people say that he won that fight, um, which I, I don't think is crazy because I've been on YouTube many years where I, I came on here and I've complained about fights being um, controversial and robberies. And then I've heard, I've heard people say to me, well, BT, true school, you got to take the belt for the champion. So my thing is, if you were to apply that principle to this fight, you know, Terrence Crawford may have won the fight. He may have nicked it by a round or two here, but did he really and truthfully take the belt from the champion? I think it's up for interpretation. I'm not so sure he did, but nonetheless, it was a good fight. I thought, um, and I want to address this too because I put out a YouTube short earlier in the week. Basically, and it was only like 15 or 18 seconds. So you know, in, in these YouTube shorts, you don't got you got you don't got time to really expound and break down what you're saying as much because it's a limited time. But I made a video basically saying that, uh, stating some reasons why I thought Majumov could could upset Terence Crawford. And one of the re one of the things I listed was that he was sparring with. Dimitri Bivol, who is a, a, a long, disciplined box from the outside, which is, I, I thought was perfect sparring because this is going to be a fight where Terrence Crawford, for a good amount of the fight, was going to try to box him from the outside. Terrence made an adjustment to eventually close the gap and, and be more of a volume puncher and out hustle and out work Majumov. But when he was exercising, trying to be the outside boxer, Majumov used his footwork, slowed the pace down, made things very hard and awkward for him. So the Bivol sparring did pay off, and I made the comment, and I had the quote in the video that Dimitri Bivol is a better pure boxer than Terence Crawford. Now people took that and they went somewhere else with it, and they, and they thought I was saying that Dimitri Bivol, or that Terence, that uh, Bivol is better than Terence Crawford. I don't think Bivol is better than Terence Crawford. I think Terence Crawford is a, the more well-rounded, more complete fighter. I, I believe Terence Crawford has a more versatile, diverse skill set. But in terms of the outside fighting, being an outside boxer, his feints, his ability to break your rhythm, Bivol is better than that at that than Crawford. And getting that kind of look consistently and sparring for Majumov, I believe did pay off in this fight. Um, where Majumov really let himself down, in my opinion, was I think he did a little bit too much posturing. I, I, I think whatever, it's either Terrence was hitting him with punching power enough to get his respect, and that's what put his hands in his pocket, or he just, he just didn't pull the trigger because um, whatever, whatever the case may be. But um, he, he let himself down by not maybe throwing more punches. Uh, so I think if he would have turned the volume up a bit more on the amount of punches he was throwing, maybe he would have been able to win a decision and win this fight. But at the same time, Terrence Crawford was countering him at times, and I think Terrence Crawford countered him just enough and hit him with just enough to, to keep his hands at bay just enough to, to win enough rounds to win the fight. So um, was it the Terrence Crawford we've seen over the last seven years that's been knocking everybody out? No. Um, 
I don't think it's fair to uh, be overly critical of Terrence Crawford, who has been such a dominant fighter on a performance by performance basis that finally, for the first time since the Obama administration, he goes a distance and people want to criticize him. So, um, a really good fight for Majumov. Uh, I think his stock shot to the roof. And I'll be honest, I, I wouldn't mind if, if Majumov can get a winner to two quality, a, win, a quality win against like a top guy in the division. I wouldn't mind seeing him run it back. And I think, you know, uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't think Canelo Crawford will happen, but I'm hoping that this will make Terrence Crawford stay at 54 and fight the guys like, um, you know, Virgil Ortiz, Boa Chuck, Fondora, you know, imagine off again. Because I think those fights are more interesting than Canelo. Canelo, to me, is a cash grab, and I feel like it's a great fighter in Terrence Crawford potentially selling his O to Canelo Alvarez. And I, I just don't like the idea of somebody as great as Terrence Crawford having a put on that much weight and potentially so no forget all that solidify us at 54 try to go three time undisputed against you know some really good fighters you know you may, you may even have like a in the next year or two you may even have a Jerron Ennis moving up in the, in the division with uh, with him being a bigger name in the sport so that could still be a fight an option an attractive option at 54 but um yeah the more interesting fights are at 54 the legacy is at 54 um, and look, I even say, look, if, 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 he, if he's able to unify or go undisputed, I think the middleweight division is going to be weak for a pretty long time. So I, I, I think winning a title at middleweight isn't even out of the question for Terrence Crawford. He's that skilled. He's that good. He's, he, he has that high of an IQ. I think he can do that. But um, nonetheless, Majumar validated a lot of things I said. I, I did pick Terrence Crawford to win the fight. I want to get that very clear as I made it clear in the, in the comment section of my short. But... Um, Majumov getting constant sparring with somebody who has mastered the art of using the lead hand, fighting long, um, being able to break your rhythm. It paid dividends in the fight to where I think when he saw Terrence Crawford, because he's used to seeing a guy that's able to break his rhythm so easily in sparring, Terrence Crawford wasn't able to do that in the fight. And he actually was able to do it to Terrence Crawford, what Bivol does to opponents and what Bivol was, was doing to him in sparring. So... Um, I think it paid off. He just let himself down by not throwing punches, uh, th uh, throwing more punches, and I think respecting the Crawford punching power a bit too much. I think I think this is a fight where Majumov, in spots, needed to impose himself, and he just didn't do it. And with, and with a guy who's as skilled and as crafty and as well versed as Terence Crawford, any slightest thing like that will cost you the fight. And, and in this case, uh, I think it did in a great and major way. So, good fight. Um, really high level fight if you're someone that's into like the sweet science of boxing and the subtleties and the lead foot leverage and just all those things that boxing nerds fawn over this is a good fight for you to watch uh, i don't think it was the most entertaining terrence Crawford fight of all time but it's definitely i would say one of the most high level terrence Crawford fights of all time in terms of what his opponents were doing in the ring so uh yeah shout out to Majumov. Majumov is a bad is a bad boy i think he'll be champion again i think i think i think on this day he could be anybody in the division and um, yeah, looking forward to seeing how both these guys move forward their careers. But uh, that's that's my take on the fight. I like to hear yours. Leave it down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just kidding, Daniel. So until next time, take your Thank you for watching another video on the Untouchable True School Sports Empire. I'm at the Boxing Hall of Fame out here in Canfield, New York. And for more great boxing content just like this video, make sure you click and subscribe right over here.